Hello, this is Hawk the Bean, and today we are going to be reading level 414 of the Backrooms. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Uh, there's like a song of the valley. Oh yeah, I'm not clicking that. It actually just plays music. To whoever this may find, you are formally invited to our, in to our home. Hardest a tardness to relax and find safety within our natural paradise. Follow the shimmering vines. They shall reveal the path to you. From Zinni. The flora shall uh, break through time and space. To bring one and all to this peaceful place. Mind the path and tend to the flowers. Or you shall be safe under our power. For as long as you shall no harm. May Hortus Atardis be your place to rest. Pretty. Survival difficulty, class habitable. Flitful resources, friendly community, safe from harm. Hortus Atardis is a grandiose botanical paradise, home to flowers and other flora across the land. For years, this level laid quiet hidden from the rest of the back rooms, but now, by dictum of the high bloom of the okay, a, these flowery folk have begun to welcome wanderers into the garden. Welcome to our sanctuary. Head Bloom Agno, did you approve of such a happening? Yes, I think it has been long enough that we have hid ourselves from them. But are you sure we can trust them? Or must I remind you why we blocked off every conceivable entryway we have? Eganot. E. That was eons ago by now. Most all of the court agreed to this choice. We are allowing we are only allowing one for now. Simply to gauge how they will act. From there we will decide whether or not we continue on with this plan. Please, my dear. If it's only one, then <sighs> Agno, my beloved, are you positive you'll be able to handle the situation and when it goes wrong? Well, I certainly did not become head bloom by acting willy-nilly now, did I? Well, I do suppose you're right. Geography. The giant botanical gardens and park, Hortus Eternus, is built on the brim with lush forests and colorful gardens. Eternally spring, the temperature sits at a nice 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect comfortable temperature for humans. A nice dewy breeze drifts through the land, permanently scented with flowers. The urban overgrowth. We can coexist. The locale is the main in town where most of the This locale is the main town where most of the levels civilization resides. Primarily consisting of the nature of humanoid species, the Evlani, yeah. A gigantic greenhouse constructed on a mountain can find one could find a multitude of shops, cafes, and other needed resources here. These resources are mostly comprised of natural materials, such as fruit, vegetables, and other plant-based matter. The current population here totals up to approximately 300 at Evlania, but there are many more residing across the whole of Hortus Aternus. Housing within this area combines barn man-made design with the ever-growing nature of natural surroundings. Furnishings are primarily early constructed of stone and wood. With vines sticking over the walls and supports. Houses do not have a power source. However, they use special level native crystals as a replacement. These crystals have many functions depending on their colors. However, the most common ones ordinarily see within households are red, utilized for heating, and blue, useful, utilized for chilling and freezing. Life is comfortable. The Great Floral Valley. Extending for miles upon miles, the valley is a great connector between many of the level's most beautiful landmarks and hot spots to visit. The Evla and the Art were said to have first awoken within this field, so the valley holds significant cultural merit as well as beauty. 
The natural landscape is a wonder. The many of Ev Evlania that live here can sometimes be found either attending to or picking the flowers from the valley. Many make roots from um, the many blooms that thrive here, choosing certain flowers to bring things such as vitality and joy to their home. In addition to acting as a place to bless life, it also functions as a sanctuary to bless death and the passing of Evlania. Whenever an Evlania wilts, a ceremony is held to remember them and allow their soul to re-enter the cycle of blooms. Everspring Atrium, the Beacon of Hope In the center of the land stands Everspring Atrium, the home of the Oket. This beautiful castle is the home of the source, the very thing which keeps the land alive. The Oket is a council that consists of around 25 chosen of Lanya, picked by the source itself. Each of the these of Lanya holds a, a, holds a specific position within the Oket, overseeing towns, maintaining the greenhouses at home of Lanya, Quality testing crystals to power homes, etc. Should a member of the Boquet wilt, another is quickly chosen to take their place, as they all play a vital role in ensuring the perpetuity of Hort, or this Aternus. Though not sure how the source chooses new members of the Boquet. However, the head bloom, the overseer of the Boquet, is always voted on by the council first, and they thereupon go undergo a trial where they may eat the source personally. Should the source accept the selected Evlania, they will become um, the new head bloom, and will tap into a never-ending source of knowledge. Should the chosen not succeed in their trial, the garden continues to grow. That's all the main locations you need to know about here. Anything else, you'll probably just find out with it's enough exploring. So what do you want to know next? Could you tell me about the Evlania then? I'm very curious about what makes you, well, you. I hope that isn't too invasive, Zinni. Oh, of course you can ask. I'll tell you as much as I can off the top of my noggin. The Evlania Overview Evlania are a humanoid plant-like species that live within Enhortus Aternus. They are sentient and highly intelligent having developed a civilization, infrastructure, and a hierarchy. This is a sketch of, of Headbloom Agno provided by our partner, Agoni. Biology. Evlania come in all shapes and sizes and have a lifespan far beyond that of the average human. However, Evlania will always have the following notable features. A, a flower covering the entirety of their head, save for their mouth and jaw, Leaf-shaped sleeves that hide their vine-like hands. Evlania have approximately four stages of growth. Seedling, buddings, flowerings, and blossoms. Evlania flower heads do not uh, properly bloom until they are nearing the end of their, their budding phase. And blossoms are the long, long, longest stage of their life. The fifth and final phase is the wilting phase, where Evlania begins to lose their petals, their color, and most importantly, their life. The flower that blooms from their head also represents the name the Evlania have. For example, an Evlania with lavenders blooming from their heads could be called Lav or even Avin. Hmm. History. Surprisingly, there is no recorded history from when the Evlania first came to be, despite their high intelligence. Some say they have existed for hundreds of years, others speculated to be shorter than that. But one thing is agreed upon amongst the species, the source bless them with their life and gifts they have, and for that they are grateful. So far, the human seems to be adapting in well. The buddings and flowerings of the undergrowth have taken a liking to them too. The integration has been a success. We could have more sooner. Surprisingly, Agno, are you alright? You seemed different since the trial. I. Oh, Igani. Why was I chosen? 
What happened with the source? I should have never been allowed in there. I should not know what I know. The source should have never accepted me in. Agno, my love, please calm down. Tell me what happened. I I can't, Agani. I'll tell you what I learned. I worry you'll be in the same state as me. Agna, we've been through everything together. I will always support you as you have always supported me. If you have a burden, I will share it with you. So please, tell me what happened. Igani, the humans were never banished. We never left to begin with. There's a part of the land where none dare tread, the Ashen Field, the last stand of the old humans before their banishment. They were greedy, they took, they burned, they trampled, never once showing respect for the land that granted them life. One day, the land had enough. One by one, nature stole the humans away. Off to fates unspoken of, the humans tried to escape, but it was far too late. The land had trapped them within, and it took back what rightfully belonged to it, life. When the humans were gone, everything was quiet. Nothing spoke, nothing sang. The land grew lonely, and so the land gave back life. It thought that if it made humans in its own image, they could care for it the way it wanted them to. It would no longer be lonely but no longer lay forgotten. As it made, it planted seeds in her mind. Seeds to forget, seeds to learn. It needed one they could trust, someone to ensure the land bloomed and prospered in its image. And so the first bloom and bouquet were made. The bloom would know its secrets. Only the bloom could handle knowing its truth. It would watch in silence as it began to regrow blooming unlike anything it had seen before, and it wept, it wept with joy as its life was once more treasured, eternally. What will happen if the source doesn't like me? Oh, if the source doesn't like you, it would have guided you away from our lands already. So, does that mean the source accepts me? <laughs> You'd have to ask Agna about that. V would uh, know what uh, the source thinks. Alright, oh, only the head bloom directly interacts with the source. Entrances and exits. Where did my mouse go? Oh, there it is. Entrances. Should you ever desire entry into this place, Follow the shimmering vines. They can appear in almost any level. Or you may be currently residing in. Unless the level lacks sunlight or has something physically presenting, preventing access from outside sources. So that it closes off levels with certain methods of entry. Should you follow the vines successfully, the entryway shall be open for you. Indicated by a grand archway. Should you follow the vine? Oh, with woven with vines and flowers. Should you exit, should you ever wish to leave, simply desire it. You'll find a stone pathway with flowering bushes on either side, which will guide you to another safe area that will often be connected to nature. Take heed to the flowers you see as they can serve as an indicator as where you may be heading. Fancies, level 10 and level 29. Dandelions, level 11 and level 125. Hibiscus, level 48 and level 149. Morning Glory, level 63. Roses, level 90 and level 186. Cherry Blossoms, level 178. Honeysuckle, level 224. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I mean, have you not heard the way the land sings to your presence? How the breeze guides you to where it wants you to go? How do flowers face you with such adoration? The source loves you. It has missed your presence. 
That was level 414 of the back rooms. If you now let's get right back to this. I forgot to do that. <laughs> anyway, that was level 414 of the back rooms. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!